yes. So I'm going to talk a bit about 5G multicast broadcast um, services in, in this talk. Um, and this is based on work that uh, Torsten and, and many others have, have done in the SA4 group uh, with me. Um, we heard earlier from Thomas about um, the, um, the LTE based um, EMBMS system. Um, this was an attempt um, to effectively um, create a, a new multicast broadcast solution that is more compatible with the 5G core and the 5G new radio system. So just um, as a uh, reminder of the um, some of the more interesting bits of the, the 5G core architecture, obviously we, we, we divide um, the functions between controlled plane and data plane or user plane as it's sometimes called. Um, and in, in the control plane, we've got key uh, functions like the service management function and the user plane function in the, in the data plane. And obviously the, the, um, the 5G RAN system um, here and the, the user equipment, which is your mobile phone. Um, and so that, 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 that core architecture was defined by the SA2 group. And then in uh, release 17, they decided to add multicast broadcast functions to that. And they defined uh, a couple of new ones, which I've um, highlighted in purple here, um, a multicast broadcast service management function and a multicast broadcast um, user plane function. So um, the, um, the, the, the service management function is, is uh, concerned with managing um, the allocation of resources to multicast in the system, uh, whereas the user plane function is, is dedicated to dealing with the actual data packets and, and, and sending them. And uh, an application function or application service can, can make use of those directly. Um, so SA2 has defined these two interfaces, uh, the NMB13 interface, um, this reference point here, um, for uh, controlling things and the N6MB reference point for, uh, for injecting packets. And if you've got a very simple use case, um, you, you can just use those um, um, reference points directly. Uh, or if you're outside the trusted domain, you can go via the, ne the network exposure function and sort of control it um, via this kind of proxy. Um, and then importantly, the, the service management function can also um, control the policy um, uh, and charging um, for uh, multicast broadcast services through this new N7 MB reference point. Um, and as I say, if you've got a simple use case, you can you can just um, do that. So, for example, if you're generating packets for some kind of emergency services communication network, um, you can interface directly at those reference points. But for 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 for, for, for most uses, we think that um, some kind of higher order um, user service is needed to uh, to manage that. And the SA2 group um, additionally defined these green functions and reference points to, to manage the user services. And, and they sit in front of um, those two purple functions. So we have the MBS function and the MBS uh, transport function, um, and they have their own reference points in MB10 and MB8. Um, and then they talk to each other a little bit over NMB2. Um, and you can still um, go outside the trust domain and in, in, interact via the NEF proxy um, uh, uh, using this NMB5 reference point. So the, these, these two green functions were defined by SA2, but they left, they left their, their specification, this 23247 specification at that. And they asked SA4, the SA4 group to flesh out um, those functions and those reference points. Um, so that's what really um, this talk is about. And so in SA4, what we did is we've um, created this higher level um, model called MBS user services. So you see the MBSF as before and the MBSTF as before, and then they have their counterparts in the client space. So there's this MBSF client that talks to the MBSF and there's an MBSTF client that talks to the MBSTF. So it's all very straightforward and simple. Um, and uh, these, these functions in the UE uh, effectively combine to, to form this MBS client. And you know, that, that, that could be a piece of middleware that's running on your mobile phone, or it, it could even be a, a separate application. But ultimately, um, you need some kind of MBS aware application that's going to make use of these services. And there are some, there are some client APIs, MBS6 and MBS7, for, um, for controlling these two um, functions. Um, in the UE. Um, 
so uh, the last bit of the jigsaw that's missing uh, I haven't talked about uh, is this MBS AS, um, and this is provided um, as a means of doing unicast repair um, when the main multicast broadcast um, service um, proves unreliable, perhaps because you, uh, you're moving around and you've dropped some packets or um, uh, so, some, some other reason. Um, but uh, the MBSTF client can, uh, can repair um, anything that's missed over this uh, MBS4 UC reference point. So that's, that's, that's the basic reference architecture there. Um, so then there's a kind of um, there's a kind of domain model that we've defined in our 26502 spec um, that, that, that talks about various different sessions that happen between all these different um, uh, actors in the system. I can quickly go through a little um, uh, walk through here. So I've numbered the points. Uh, so firstly, um, the, the application provider um, provisions this thing called an MBS user service and in fact that's actually comes in two parts there's a kind of a high level umbrella thing uh, which is the MBS user service where you um, define um, various um, high, high level aspects like you know, uh, the, the metadata for the service you know its name um, and um, maybe even some external identifier um, and then the, the, the second level involves um, provisioning what's called a, a user data ingest session, and all of this is is this interaction with the with the with the MBSF. So um, so that's uh, that's the first two steps, and then there's a third step where this MBSF starts advertising the user service session um, to the to the client. Um, so it says you know this thing is available, um, and then uh, the fourth step. Is that uh, the uh, the data starts getting ingested um, from the, the application provider by the by the MBS transport function, um, and then fifthly it starts to distribute that to the MBS TF client. So then um, at some later point, the, the the application decides it wants to start receiving that session. Um, so that's the sixth step. Um, the seventh step is that the MBS TF client um, then starts receiving. Um, uh, the um, uh, the uh, the user service, um, and then um, there's a little bit of interaction between the application and the client, and um, to uh, to control what it wants to receive, and then finally um, the the actual user data um, starts um, uh, that, that has been received by the MBSTF client is then passed to the MBS Aware application over this application data session. That's kind of how, how it all, all fits together, and that and just to just to add that um, this this interaction here uh, could be some um, low level socket or it could be something like an HTTP proxy server um, exposing stuff to the to the to the MBS Aware application. So to support all this, we've got um, an information model that sits inside the the MBSF, and this is essentially just a different way of um, showing the, the same information that uh, I, I, I was just describing on the previous slide. Um, so we've got the MBS application provider here that, uh, that, that does this, this two-step provisioning thing. So there's user service and the data ingest session. Um, so you can see that there's a bit of metadata in the user service and maybe you know some external service identifiers. That could be something like a, a DVBI. Um, service identifier to, to cross-reference some other metadata service. Uh, the data ingest session indicates some active period, so you can automatically start ingesting like, between the hours of 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. every day if that's when you want your service to be available. Um, and then within within each of these user data ingest sessions, there's a set of, of, of MBS distribution sessions, and they contain information like the MBS session identifier. That's 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 the equivalent uh, of the TMGI, the temporary mobile group identifier that, that was used in EMBMS. But it can also be just a simple source specific multicast address in, in release 17. Um, you can even target particular service areas for your distribution session if you want to. Um, you declare a bit rate and, um, and various other different parameters. Parameters, maybe maybe some forward error correction, and then when, when it's time to advertise it, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a two level um, advertisement. So there's a high level user service announcement um, with, with some of the information from the user service uh, and, and elsewhere, and then there's a there's a lower level 
distribution session announcement for each of the distribution sessions that make up your user service. And the, the basic idea is that the, the MBSF client is the thing that's consuming this high level information. Um, and that maybe allows it to tell the application. Hello. Um, oh, hello. Hello. Can you please mute yourself if you are not speaking? Let me, thank you. Please continue, Richard. Okay. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, so this 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 high level user service announcement is consumed by the MVSF client, so that it can maybe um, you know um, pass the name to an application, so that you can select between the different available services, some ideas like that. And then the low level information, um, including what would go in the SDP, um, uh, is 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 consumed by the MVSF client. So that's that's basically how it fits together. And within this, we've we've uh, defined two. Um, distribution methods, two different ways of distributing um, MDS content. The first one is this object distribution method, and that's for distributing things like HTTP um, objects that might be, I don't know, dash segments, for example, or um, HTML pages, all, all sorts of things uh, that are object based would use the object distribution method. And um, we, we've specified the possibility of either pushing those objects into the MBSDF or getting them to pull those objects from some external web server. And then within the distribution method, there are four different operating modes that we've, we've defined. One, just a single one-shot file um, that you send, and that's particularly suited to that, that push-based model. Um, um, because, because then you manage the complexity outside the MBSDF. Um, there's a collection that you can that you can define with it with a with a, uh, a manifest so that could be for example an html page and you know some images that go with it uh, star sheets javascript libraries whatever you want to send um, there's a variant of that called carousel where you regularly repeat um, a collection and you can even get it to automatically um, check whether the, the, the files have changed when you're using pull-based ingest and automatically update them in the carousel. And then finally, um, and perhaps most relevant, um, the object streaming uh, operating mode, uh, where you provide a presentation manifest, like, a, I don't know, a dash MPD or an HLS um, master uh, playlist, uh, and, and, and the MBSTF um, automatically fetches the objects or you push the objects in at the right time and, and, and it sends them. So that, that's the object distribution method. The, the, the other thing that we've defined is a packet distribution method, which is a much simpler, lower level um, way of accessing the system. Um, and that uh, supports um, uh, unicast packet ingest, perhaps over a tunnel. And within that, there are two operating modes. There's a proxy mode where essentially um, you provide um, UDP packet payloads, probably, probably unicast ones, and, and they get converted into multicast by the MDSTF. Um, and sent and stream in, in new, new packets. Um, and then there's also a forward operating mode where you can tunnel um, uh, your multicast packets that you've generated inside a unicast tunnel and they just get forwarded um, unmodified um, to, to the downstream system. Um, we haven't specifically defined a mode for RTP in case you're interested. Uh, and that was a question you might have had, um, but we've said that you can use either of these Operating modes of the packet distribution distribution methods to uh, achieve that effect. So this is a kind of a, a protocol stack view of how the MBS TF, this green part, works. Um, and so for the object distribution method, I, uh, we just illustrated here um, the the, the pull-based um, method and the push-based method. And the only difference between the two is that in the pull case, uh, you, you issue a GET to the upstream web server and, and it responds. Whereas in the pull, uh, push case. Um, you're just directly um, pushing items onto the MBSTF. In both cases, the MBSTF is effectively translating um, HTTP unicast into uh, it's a flute-based protocol in, in release 17, um, uh, and that's sent over IP multicast packets. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, and this is just a picture of what's going on inside the MBSTF for that case. So it ingests those HTTP objects, either pushed or pulled, um, it segments them into um, some other um, smaller chunks. Uh, it might apply some um, FEC to those chunks, and then it takes the the, uh, the chunks and the FEC block, um, uh, sorry, the FEC yeah, repair information, um, and uh, and packetizes it 
uh, into multicast packets, and then it schedules those uh, multicast packets for transmission at, at, at a particular rate, um, depending on whether it's you know in carouseled or just single shot, you know, fast as fast as possible. So that's the object distribution method. And then for the packet distribution method, um, well, there are just a couple of illustrations here that show the difference between the two operating nodes, the proxy node and, and the forward only node. So in the proxy mode, you can see um, these simple UDP packets um, are, are being ingested by the MBSTF. And uh, you know, the, the, the UDP headers can be restamped here. Uh, and, um, and, and you have a new UDP packet to send over multicast. Um, whereas in the forward only mode, um, you've got this extra tunneling layer, so you can produce your own IP multicast packets and then tunnel them inside a, a unicast UDP uh, packet. Uh, and then the, the MBSTF will unwrap those and just send, send your IP multicast packets uh, over MBS. Um, these figures, by the way, are all in um, Annex B of uh, the 26502 spec. Um, and uh, yes, this is a slightly simpler view in this case of what's going on inside the MBSDF. You're ingesting packets. You might be optionally adding some FEC to those. You packetize and then you schedule the packets for transmission. So as, as Torsten, I think, mentioned uh, ooh, way back at the start of uh, today's session, um, that there is an ambition to to define um, the delivery of 5G media streaming um, services via MBS, but that's not something that we've had time to do in release 17. So that's an ambition to add um, in release 18. So very similar to what Thomas Stockham I presented earlier um, about um, layering 5G media streaming over the EMBMS um, multicast broadcast system. Um, we envisage that something very similar could be done to put 5G media streaming sessions over this new um, multicast broadcast um, system that's been defined in release uh, 17. And uh, similar to the other talks, here's just a list of uh, the relevant specs. Um, most of the stuff that we've done in SA4 is in um, this new um, 502 spec, that's the, the stage two architecture, and then the 517 uh, spec. Um, has got all of the uh, the protocols uh, and formats defined in it, but there's plenty of other specs. This was a uh, again a piece of work that was done across, uh, in this case, four different different groups. Um, so there's 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 plenty of other specs that describe stuff as well. Um, and that I think is me done.